G'day folks. Welcome to a nice little equipment autopsy. Uh, first, in, first in quite a while actually. I'm just gradually getting back into YouTube and uh, yeah. Rummaging around my local scrapyard. They've got all sorts of awesome stuff there at the moment including a few, old, a couple of old air-cooled Deutz diesel engines and other stuff. So you'll see, possibly see some videos on that if I decide to pick them up. But for now, uh, my local McDonald's has had a bit of a refurbish and I found these uh, display units from the drive-thru sitting in the pile. They've been mangled, the excavator's gotten to them, uh, there was a third one which was basically crushed into a figure eight shape, left that one there but these two here were the most intact that I could find without digging, like getting them to operate the machine and dig through the pile. This one's in really good nick, it cycles its standard advertising after boot up, um, despite the physical shock and damage, the mechanical hard drive still working. This one here also works. Um, it's suffered severe damage. The armoured glass is all broken. I believe it's also like an auto dimming diffuser. There's a light sensor and like a status um, LED module there. Right now you can see it's blinking like it's trying to find network. Uh, and the display on this one's also damaged. So I'll plug it in, you can see the boot cycle. They're both slightly different. This one runs it's a 533 megahertz, um, oh, what do you call it? I can't remember what kind of processor they run, but um, it's not an Atom, it's not an Intel, I don't think it's an Intel processor, but anyway, I'll do a separate video on this one when I work out how to hack it and modify it. This one here, we're going to tear it apart tonight. You've got dead lines and pixels on the display, and the colours are all completely off. Yeah, Delphi display systems. It's a Delphi um, auto confirmation system or OCS. Uh, OCS model something or other. I can't quite remember. Hopefully there are more of these in that pile that I can pull out tomorrow. I'm going to go back there and have a look around. Uh, this one's running 166 megahertz, free DOS kernel. <laughs> Completely different to this one. This is a slightly newer revision. This one's definitely a lot older. and it's not all that happy. <laughs> you can sort of see that. It does its little uh, diagnostic on system health and freaks out at times. The other one doesn't do that. So yeah, the display's off colour and it's got bad pixel lines. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be uh, really worth salvaging. But I'm gonna tear this one to bits for spare parts and just general autopsy. But it goes through the same um, ad loop as this one does. So yeah, they are technically working. This one's not as happy as that one. So this is probably going to be one that I clean up and clean the. It's like. 8mm thick uh, triple layer armoured glass basically vandal proof, you can smack it with a sledgehammer and you'd be struggling to actually hit the LCD because there's a gap inside there they're deliberately made to be vandal proof so uh, yeah that's nice equipment autopsy let's open this thing up it is a Delphi OCS auto confirmation system 9200-150 yeah, by Delphi Display Systems, and it was installed by Bytecraft. Surprise, surprise. Bytecraft is a fairly big company. <laughs> yeah, in case you're wondering, here's the boot sequence on the uh, second one. I'll give you some system specs. It's completely different to the one that's currently running. This is a new. This is a newer model. Yeah, geode 433, that's what it is. It will be interesting to get inside both of them and see what they're actually like. And I believe this, um, this armoured glass is also auto-darkening, or I guess it adju adjusts... Um, adjust its own um, 
what do you call it, diffusion level, or whatever you want to call it, according to light, because I think there's a light sensor in the bottom corner of the panel. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Food. These things are terrible. They are making me hungry. <laughs> I think I want hamburgers tonight. Not McDonald's hamburgers though. I'm not a fan of them. I get locally made hamburgers from uh, businesses that make them by hand from raw materials instead of processed stuff. Okay, so the front, um, well, I guess you could call it retainer, um, also creates a watertight seal. Um, little bowl studs hold it in place. Uh, there's a plastic bezel that goes around it. They were sitting at the scrapyard, but again, they were all broken up and beaten to hell, so I didn't bother grabbing any. I can make my own for the one that I want to keep, the one with the glass that isn't broken. Again, it's fairly tough. It's not auto dimming or not not controlled. For some reason I thought it was because I could see like a liquid layer between it like that, but I think that's just the um, polycarbonate goo that's in between it. It's just two layers of quarter inch glass with some um, reinforcing material. It's not quite as tough as I thought, but again, I might still take this out to the range and test it against a um, air rifle and a standard uh, like subsonic 22, that kind of thing, even though that one's compromised. If I can find more tomorrow, if I can find more of these things, I'll actually um, shoot an intact one and see what it does. But yeah, you've got the watertight seal, which is badly uh, compromised by the uh, mechanical damage, but yeah, I'm not... The monitor itself is suspended inside. I'm surprised the monitor has suffered so much mechanical damage, but it's probably shock damage. We'll find out when I get it out of there. Next step is to flip it over and remove the entire back plate with the heat sinks. There's even a short amount of running. I could feel a bit of warmth in those heat sinks. This thing's dissipating some heat. These are made to withstand direct sunlight, like ridiculously high temperatures, ridiculously low temperatures. They have an internal cabinet heater, which may also explain the heat on the heat sinks to drive off humidity. Uh, these things are really, really, really robust. They're deliberately made that way for just longevity, that kind of thing. This was made in 2002-ish, 2000, 2002 to 2005, I guess. The copyright's no real way to go by it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been around a little while, and apparently my local McDonald's has had its drive through refurbished because there was a whole pile of just drive through signage and the the big booths and the, the speaker microphone stand that you talk to, that's all there, it's all smushed up though. I just found these things sitting on the edge of the pile and figured, uh, yeah, let's have a look at some generic uh, Delphi drive through and basically display units, you can run whatever you want on them. In this case they were just sitting there running advertisements day in day out. Okay, on the back of the unit, it's well heat sunk, uh, you've got an ethernet port with a protective um, waterproof cap. There's a nice little neoprene o-ring and everything on it. This thing's made to withstand some ridiculous extremes. Um, and I'm guessing one of these is programming port or some, uh, pro probably an interconnect between other units and the other one will be an RS-232 because I remember there was a um, RS-232 check on boot up. So that's probably RS-232 and that might be an interconnect to um, basically duplicate or chain the units together. Not too sure. I haven't bothered looking the manual up. I'm sure someone will and correct me, but uh, yeah, I'm just doing this on the fly. So uh, yeah, as I said, OCS 9200-150. It's definitely older than the one down there, which we'll play around with and see if we can hack it and modify it. But uh, I've just taken all the screws out. I'm just going to try and separate the uh, waterproof gasket and uh, open this thing up. Alrighty. Well, this thing's kind of compact. Um, at first I thought this had a mechanical hard drive in here and I might be corrected when I get it apart but to be honest I think the noise I was hearing was the fans. I can't see a mechanical drive in there but there's a lot of these little um, US Toyo fans in here. This whole thing's American made and it, it looks like it's all Imperial fasteners. It's all um, definitely sturdier than uh, Chinese manufacturing. Um, it's quite nice. It's got this nice little waterproof um, Ethernet pass-through, which is kind of cute. 
There's some good salvageable bits on this one. I might even grab the uh, one that's been smushed and just see what I can pull out of it. Because there's the um, boot, which is half jumped out of its socket. Like this thing's been knocked around so much that this thing's everything's moved in this. I'm sure if I snuggle the connectors up, it'd probably come good. But the display itself, again, I don't know. It's got a nice thick rubber membrane on the back of it. And this housing, look at that, it's quarter inch aluminium. This thing's meant to take some serious abuse. There's the inverter for the backlights. Everything's pretty much separate. I think the LCD driver itself. Yeah, there we go. You've got T-Con in there, and the LCD driver's built into the main board. So it's a single board solution, essentially. It's got the LCD driver, it's got the CPU, the uh, boot ROM, this little chip card thing here. Uh, like basically flash card. It's got a single SD RAM or yeah probably SD RAM um, in there. Yeah. I'll snug a few connectors up and plug it in, we'll see what it does. Alright, let's turn this on. I think that's fan bearing noise. I don't think there's a mechanical drive in here, it's just purely uh, Ethernet operated and um, that little uh, little flash card. These displays washed out around the edges though. <laughs> Seen better days. <laughs> yeah, that dead pixel lines kind of killed it. Yeah. This one's probably even faulty before it was removed. Actually, I think the last time I went through the McDonald's drive through down here, this thing was having trouble. I did notice one of the displays was a bit funky. It's working out. Wow! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> it's seen better days. Yep. Uh, poke the LCD driver. No, oh, that's making it worse. Nope, that broke it. Yeah, the panel itself has really uh, suffered. Yeah, that panel's done. At least the other one's working fine. <laughs> It's dying. Hey, there we go. Oh, almost came good. Percussive maintenance. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. And this little board here is probably a bit upset. That's a little panel driver. A little bit better. Anyway, onward. Tear this thing apart. Okay, so now that I've got the casing completely opened, uh, there's definitely no mechanical drive. The sound I can hear is just bad fan bearings. These fans obviously run 24-7, seven days a week. And that spin-up sound that sounded like a mechanical hard drive wasn't that. It's just chattery bearings. So, uh, yeah, it's all solid state. Uh, very well built, all machined, um, cast and extruded aluminum. Decent display panel, it's a Korean made panel. Uh, is it GTT? Made in Korea. Again, damaged from shock and that kind of thing, physical stress, but uh, that one there is still working fine. Um, there's your internal heater to drive off moisture, 36 watts at 12 volts. You've got main 12 volt input from a nice power supply, stud type connections, which is handy. I'm going to save that. Again, there's not really much that isn't saveable in here. Even the inverter still works. Although I noticed the uh, 
the, <laughs> the inverter transformer is long since decoupled from its little heatsink. But all of this is um, basically milled out of solid extruded stock. It's, it's all pretty thick, solid. These things are designed to put up with a hell of a lot of uh, abuse. The relays are all gooed down, the little red dots are adhesive. Um, what else did I see? The um, battery socket and everything's adhesived. The only thing that's not glued down is a little um, boot ROM, or what do you call it, flash card. A little 128 or no, 256 meg flash card that contains all the uh, operating, operational data. That is your panel driver, display, LCD driver. So it's basically a single board solution. You have LCD driver, boot, um, network, um, power input obviously, RAM. I think it's got 128 mega RAM or something like that. Oh, I can't even eject that without taking the thing off. It's blocking the bloody lever, but still looks like standard SD RAM. Uh, again, this is the older model. This is 133 megahertz. That one there is 400 and something megahertz. Again, I'll pull the back off that one and show that one in a later video. But yeah, it's a pretty robust little unit. Good parts unit given the damage that's been done to it. But again, I've got some nice little uh, shielded um, shielded Ethernet connectors and a uh, waterproof breakout. Kind of cool. Power supply itself. Tamara Corporation of America, made in Mexico. Hecho in Mexico. Input 100 to 280 volts AC. So standard switch mode power supply, 12 volt output. That's it. There is a header there which may have some other sub voltages, but again, that's not populated. So this is just a straight 12 volt power supply. Output, yeah, 12 volt DC, 20 amps. That's a nice power supply to have around. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for this one. I'm not going to really destroy it or really break down the board. The chips themselves, it's got a Xilinx processor on it. XC951 44XL. And there's a National Semiconductor um, Super IO chip which controls all the interface and everything. So it's actually a Xilinx processor in this one. That one there has a completely different processor. Anywho, that's about as far as I'm going to take this one. Um, I will strip it apart in time, probably tomorrow, but yeah, thanks for watching.